Monarchy. Hey guys, welcome back. Hey. And we're doing another Monarch. We're finishing. We're gonna try to finish the Monarch today. We're not gonna finish it, but we'll see what we're we got. We're gonna try to finish it. So, yeah. Without further we're doing ado, the Monarch let's no. go. No, right, I gotta explain what we're doing. <laughs> we're not going in yet. So today we're gonna be ranking uh, some more of the Monarchs. I don't think we'll get done, but we might. I don't want this video to drag on too long. What are your cook? It's got. They gotta see me too. Okay. Just like that. Okay, I gotta see what that looks like now, because I don't want to get screwed up the rest of the video. He told so, me that... That looks good. Okay. Alright, enough of that. So, we're, we're don't move it. Don't touch the rest of the thing. Okay. So, today we're going to be finishing up the rain, or the, the tier list of all of the rest of the monarchs. I still have my Mountain Dew from yesterday. This was kind of just a random, this is just a Monday night. I just got done doing homework. I didn't actually finish it. But Same. we just decided to come down here and do this. So... We left off yesterday with Edward the Second, and now we're doing King Edward the Third. The Third. Edward the Third. So without further ado, let's so go. All right, guys. So let's okay, I'm planning on going to Richard Cromwell here today. I think we're gonna do these, and then tomorrow we'll do these. No. All right. So we'll we'll just see how far we get. King right. Edward the Third. He did it. He did kind of a lot. Oh, yeah, he, did. he he served uh, from 1327 to 1377. 1327. All right. 1320. Excuse me. So here's the deal. To, oh, I what he said. So here's what happened. So what do you think about Edward III? Whoa. I don't like that painting, by the way. I think he's got other. He kind of looks like like what are the words? There's a better painting of him. Let me see if I can find it online because this is the one I want. I want to. I would give him this, but I would give him a B. Right? No, he's not. He's better than B. He's like one. He's one of the best kings in the history. Okay, let me try to find a picture of him, the one that I want to show you. I think I'm gonna put him in, but not A. He's better than A. He's probably an S. I think I'm gonna put him in S. And here's why. So this is the picture we're going off of. Stop. No, 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 I gotta t uh, explain. This is gonna take a long time to explain. Okay. He did uh, so much okay. for England. I just wanna hold the mouse. So Edward III, obviously, he comes to the, th the throne when he's 14 years old, as you remember earlier. Uh, Edward II was his father. In 1327, he got deposed by his wife. His own wife deposed him, so he was now not king. And Edward II did end up dying later that year. So Edward III... His mother was basically ruling. Well, she wasn't ruling. Uh, her mother uh, was Isabella of France, and she, um, her, she was in love with this guy named Roger Mortimer. And her and Roger Mortimer came in and uh, deposed Edward the Second. They basically took him off the throne. So then, and Edward the guys, Third. If you guys don't know what deposed mean, it means captured and basically kind of just like starved them Bas to death. Basically, they're not king anymore. Basically. So what happens is Roger Mortimer is basically now the king even though he's not. Because the throne... Because he wasn't blood related. At, yeah. It actually passes to Edward III. So Edward III is considered the king, but he's not doing anything. Because Roger Mortimer is carrying out power. So Edward III is like 14 years old at this time. And Roger Mortimer is basically king right now. And Edward the Edward the Third is basically really mad right now because he's like furious because he's like I am the son of Edward the Second. I should be the king, not this stupid guy. So what he does is he he rallies up a bunch of nobles and in the middle of the night they sneak into Roger Mortimer's bedroom and then they capture him and then execute him. They have him executed. I think his wife, his mother got to live, though, because it was obviously his mom. He didn't want to execute his mother. Um, yeah, she lived to 1358, but um, Roger Mortimer gets executed in 1330, so Edward III was dealing with him for three years. It's only until he was about 17 when he becomes of age he gets rid of Roger Mortimer, and then he actually becomes the real, real king, even though Edward III, he was already king earlier. But here's his thing Edward III does. So he's king during two major events. In European history, you the first one was the Black Death, the bubonic plague. You ever heard of that before? The Black Death. Mm, I don't think. It was a huge disease that went through Europe in the 1340s and 1350s. It was during his reign. It killed about a third of the population. There was basically uh, they were delivering something from India, and there were rats on there were um, rats on the 
No, we, we, I don't think he's S yet, because I'm still going through the basics. So there were rats on the ship, and they basically got, went in through all Europe, and a third of the population was dead. The worst disease in human history was the bubonic plague, or the Black Death. They, you went by both those things. And, uh, Edward III was king during that. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to say this. England is kind of... Britain is kind of isolated from most of the other European countries. It didn't get hit as hard as, like, Spain or France or... Or the Holy Roman Empire did, but it got hit pretty hard. But it didn't have as much deaths as like those other European countries that are all in the ma main area. They were kind of isolated, but there were still people that died in England. And also, the second one was the Hundred Years' War was going on during his time. Because here's what happens. Philip IV of France is the king at the time. And France hates England so much. England and France were like enemies it's only really recently when they became friends during world war one but until then like back in the middle ages they hated each other so um philip the fourth dies okay and then louis the tenth becomes the king of france he dies in his 20s and his wife his wife is pregnant with his next child when he dies so and he becomes king when he's born his name is jean the first of france so he's a baby, okay? So he's basically ruling in the womb for five months. He's a king in the womb of his mother. He's a king. But here's what happens. John, Jean, baby dies. Jean is born on November 16th, 1316. He dies, or no, he's born on November 15th, 1316, and dies on November 20th, 1316. Jean lived only five days. So he reigned for five months, but lived for five days. <laughs> And he was basically a baby. So the throne passed to his uncle, who died without heirs, and his brother, Charles, also died without any heirs. So there was a succession crisis. So if you remember Isabella, as I was talking about earlier, the one that deposed Edward II, well, she was actually the daughter of Philippe IV. So Charles um, and Louis, they're, uh, you like my French accent? They're, um, they're from the house of Capet. They're sister was Isabella. So Isabella married Edward II and her son was Edward III. So Edward III claimed to be the true king of France. But people in France were like, oh, it's through a female line. Ooh, this is spicy because we it's male only, not female. So they're like, screw this. But there were people that wanted Edward III to be the king of France. And that was what sparked the Hundred Years' War against France and England that lasted from 1328 all the way until 14... 40 something it yeah the hundred years war lasted actually lasted 116 years and france did eventually win though um so that is why we're gonna give him an s because no no no, no yeah. here's what Dude, he does how much can you say about one person he's, he's so revolutionary he creates the royal dukes which have never happened before he has five sons the only thing that Moving sucks about no 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 no, no. The, first, the only thing that sucks about Edward III is, is what happens after him. Because he creates the Royal Dukes. He has five sons. Okay, five sons. First, you have Edward the Black Prince, who is his eldest son. He fights in the Hundred Years' War. He's a famous Hundred Years' War, a Hundred Years War commander, Edward the Black Prince. So he's the Prince of Wales. You also have the Duke titles. His second son was Lionel, who is the, uh, the Duke of Clarence. The third son is John of Gaunt, the Duke of Lancaster. And then Edmund of Langley is his fourth son, who is the Duke of York. The fifth son is Thomas Woodstock, who is the Duke of Gloucester. Now, that was what basically started the Wars of the Roses later later down the line, was with Edward III's sons. And the fact that he had so many... Stop. The fact that he had so many sons kind of screwed him, screwed up his family. The next down the line, there was a whole big family rivalry that would go on for the next few like the next hundred years after Edward III dies. But he reigns for 50 years, a good reign. And he's a good king, too. Does a lot for the a lot for England. So I think he gets an S tier for that alone. He was, Plus, I freaking love Edward III. He's one of my favorite kings. Uh, he just he does so much for the kingdom. Uh, All right. The good, not, I, I'm not sure, like, it's kind of out of his control what happens after him. So you can't really blame Edward III directly for the Wars of the Roses. Mm -hmm. But here's what happens. So, he dies in 1377. What are you doing with Stephen? <laughs> Stephen is not asked here. <laughs> Stephen's me and your contacts. Oh, oh, yeah, all my contacts. Lydia's King Stephen, so she wants to be back. Um, 
So here's what happens. Edward the Third, who so who gets to take the throne after he Are dies? Are they related? Who? They look alike. Yeah, they're all related somehow. Alright, listen. Yeah. Who gets to take the throne out of Edward the Third's children? Mm. Out of his five sons. Which one gets to take the throne? The oldest. The oldest. Good job. So, Edward the Black Prince is basically held to be the king. But I think Black Prince would have been a good king, but here's what happens. He died in 1376, just a year before Edward III did. So, after Edward III, something bad happens. Edward the Black Prince had a 10-year-old son named Richard, who becomes the, who is now in line to become the, the king, because Edward the Black Prince still has a son, so... It goes by primogeniture, so the firstborn son of a firstborn son actually takes precedence over all of his uncles. So what John of Gaunt, Edmund Langley, Thomas Woodstock, they're all bypassed in favor of their 10-year-old nephew. Are we on to him or are we still Richard the Second, right here. Right here, guys. Richard II is a complete disaster, and he's the last king from the house of Plantagenet. He comes, I mean, I kind of, I mean, he kind of sucks just because... Mm, He's not indecisive. He was king for 22 years. Oh, so D. From 1377 to 1399. So he becomes king after Edward III dies. No, don't place him in tier just yet, because I'm going to tell you what he did, and you're going to place him in tier because So what do you have to say about his looks so far? Mm, they're not the, the, ba the worst. That They're not that bad for, like, these monarchs. I feel like some of them are worse. He's just not... I'm going to see what to get... So... That's yes. Richard II. So why is he Richard II? Because he is this guy's <coughs> kid. The oldest kid. No. No, he's a grandson. The oldest kid died. Good Edward idea. the Black Prince was the oldest son. He was Edward the Black oh, Prince's yeah. son. He was the grand... Richard II was the grandson of Edward the Third. Uh. But he comes to the throne at ten years old because Edward the Black Prince died. Uh, I don't know what he died of, but he died really young. I think he was like... When did Queen Elizabeth come to the throne? 1952. What year was how old was she then? 25. She's 95 now. Wow. Yeah, she's been on the throne for 70, 70 years. 70 years. Yeah, she just hit 70 years yesterday. Mm. So here's the deal. So Richard II, he comes to the throne at 10 years old. He's got powerful uncles, the Duke of Lancaster and the Duke of York. Very powerful. Uh, his cousin is Henry Bolingbroke. Which is right here. He eventually usurps him. Richard III's basically a disaster. He's the last Plantagenet king. Obviously, he becomes king at 10 years old, younger than Lydia is now. I mean, you can see kings of minority never go well because they just don't know what they're doing at all. And even into his 30s, he's still really not a good leader. He's king, obviously, during the Peasants' Revolt of the 1380s. Um which at the time was really bad, bad influence on the kingdom. So, um, let's see here. So yeah, Edward the, the Richard the Second. I mean, I like Richard the Second. I mean, I I personally like him, but if we're going like from a real standpoint, he wasn't very good of a king, and I can't rape him too high. But let's see here. Um, yeah, peasants' revolt was going on. He. He basically, his father was Black Prince. Now, I personally think Black Prince probably would have been a good king at that time. And he also executed a lot of statesmen for the uh, and banished them into exile because he didn't want them to do that. So, uh, John of Gaunt and his son Henry, they both get exiled in France, I think. I don't actually know where they're at, but they get both get exiled. And Henry Bolingbroke is the guy. So here's what happens. So no one likes Richard. So let's let's rank him. So what do you give him? I wouldn't give him an F. Would I give him a G? Because D's running out, and I just his they're not running good. out. His looks are good, so I give him a C. Yeah, like I mean. I mean, he was king when my dad was born, too, on, so... I know you are I don't know, I'm kind of torn between D. I mean, he didn't do good, but... He didn't do bad. His father was Black Prince. Okay. Black okay. Prince. I feel like C's too high, though. We're going to give him a D. We're going to stop using D. No, I wouldn't give him a D. I'd give him a C because... Well, we're going to get a lot of really bad kings here soon, dude. Um, so, um, 
Oh, so yeah. All right, so, we're in so, the next. Here's how this guy comes to the throne. So Richard dies when he's like, he only lives to be like thirty something. Because here's what happens. He, don't do that. Just don't mess with that. Because the camera, it's already bad enough. The quality. So um, Richard the second, he basically gets usurped by his cousin. His cousin's Henry Bolingbroke. So, in 1399, uh, Henry comes in, he's like, you know what, we're going to take over, oh, he's the son of John of, John the Gaunt, or John of Gaunt, uh, he's the son of him, and he basically said, so John of Gaunt dies in 1399, February of 1399, the throne of the Duke of, Lan or the Duke of Lancaster title passes down to Henry, his son, and he's about the same age as Richard, he was also born in 1367. Henry the Fourth. Oh, I found them. One fifteen oh nine to three seven. No, that's Henry the Eighth. Oh, okay. Henry the Fourth. Henry Henry I V. Oh, I V I I I. V I I I. Yeah, that's eight. Do you not know how Roman numerals are? So he becomes Henry the Fourth. So Henry the Fourth, he's not king yet. He's in Bolingbroke. He was obviously in exile at the time. Ah! Because Richard II had banished him. Huh? No, four is IV. Under the House of Lancaster. Wait, is he on? What? Let me see. Is it King Henry? Oh, that's VI. VI is the sixth. IV, 1399 to 1413. Yeah. I found them! Alright, see what happens. So Henry, uh, he's in exile right now. He's banished from the kingdom. So he comes in, he's like, he rallies up a bunch of people. He gets an idea that he's basically, you know what? Oh, I'm going to be the king now. So he, he rallies up a bunch of people. He's like, you know what? Will you will you join me and go? we're going to go um, usurp Richard II? So here's what happens. And the people there are like, you know what? We don't really like Richard II anyway, so why not? We're, we'll, we'll, we'll try to... Uh, conquer him, take him over. So here's what Richard's doing. Richard is on an expedition in Ireland right now. He's over in Ireland, um, and he comes back from Ireland on the trip, and Henry comes into England. On the way back, when Henry, w Richard gets back into oh, England, nice. England. I don't know what I just did. Henry Sorry. comes in, and they capture him. <gasps> they capture Richard, throw him in the Tower of London, and Henry becomes Henry IV in 1399. That's Which, I think there's something guys. wrong with this, because... Alrighty, guys, I'm gonna go, because I gotta shower and stuff. No, Momo's coming up. Who is Momo. When? Right there. There's three left. Uh, speed it up. So, he comes on in. Uh, he basically... I don't think that's right, because you should not have the power to usurp a king like that. That's why I think Edward the Third was in ways kind of detrimental to the kingdom because he created the Duke of Lancaster title um, which was not good uh, but it, w it was good cause, but the, he, there was more the rule was kind of like I don't know you, you should not have the power to usurp a king like that but Henry did and that's what happened and he basically starts the Wars of the Roses right there with Richard the uh, second, he gets executed later in February of 1400, February 14th, 1400, on Valentine's Day. I don't think uh, Valentine's Day existed back in 1400, but that's how that is. Uh, so Richard II, he was executed, he's thrown in the tower of London, and he's executed. Uh, Richard II, if you're wondering, like, why didn't his kids inherit the throne? Well, he never actually had any kids, Richard II, so they were obviously, he didn't have any. So, uh, Henry is the thing. But Henry is the son of John of Gaunt, by the way, the third son, so keep that in mind when we go forward. So, Henry IV, he's king from 1399 to 1413. He's not too bad. Um, it's just the kind of the way he gets to the thrones a little a little uh, fishy there. But uh, all right, What do you have to say about Henry IV? I think he looks sweet, actually. I like the Lancasters. Uh, personally, I, I I prefer the Lancasters over the Yorks, that we'll get to in a sec. Lancasters are not bad. So, Lydia, what do you think about Henry the Fourth right here? Uh, 
I think he's a. Here, let me tell him how I feel. Right there. His looks are terrible. He looks great. He looks terrible. The, the first guy, he looks awesome. So he's the son of John the Gaunt, or John of Gaunt. Um, as you can see there, uh, he's got a son named Henry. He was the part of Richard's advisors at the time. John of Gaunt. He inherited all of John of Gaunt's estates. He's one of the richest men there. He did, um, he married Joan of Navarre in, ha, I was looking this up. He married Joan of Navarre on, uh, of Navarre on, in 1403, in February 7th, 1403, and today's February 7th. It's kind of funny. Huh? That's funny. Uh, which was a very unpopular choice. He did not make a good marriage. He, he should, uh, kings are not really known to be the best guys picking spouses. Uh, so his, his queen was the he married the princess of Navarre in 1413. Um, incessant rebellions and revolts became uh, very costly to crush, and his support dwindled. Um, a lot of people. He wasn't very popular. Henry the Fourth wasn't very popular, especially because of how he got to the throne. Uh, he did execute the Archbishop of York, Richard Scrope, in 1405, uh, as you can see there. Uh, he his health was failing really bad in 1412 and 1413. So that was how that died. He died in uh, 1413. Uh, he was pretty young too. I mean, he wasn't even he wasn't even 50. I think he was in his 40s. Well, they didn't live long back then. So I'd give Henry the. I mean, he wasn't a good king. But he did take out Richard the Second. Would you? Give? I think I think he's a good C tier. I think Henry the Fourth is a good C tier. What would you say? Alright, next up, Henry who we have? Henry the Fifth. Alright, Henry the Fifth. Uh I, I love Henry the Fifth. My one of my favorite kings of England. Uh he looks sweet too. Look at that guy. Wait, when did King George the Third run again? Seventeen hundreds. This is this is fourteen hundreds. Seventeen sixties when it became king. Seventeen sixties. Seventeen six D. And then it was eighteen twenty. Okay. Alright, we're getting off topic. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So Henry V is one of my favorite. I wanna know when he dies. He died in eighteen twenty. He's uh so Henry the No he died in eighteen twenty eight. Henry the Fifth, no, he's born in seventeen thirty eight. Eight. And then died in no, we're not. It's George III. We're not talking about him. We're talking about Henry V. So Henry V. He's king from 1413 to 1422. Uh, he's obviously one of the. Uh, he's the second king of the House of Lancaster. Um, he, obviously, the Hundred Years' War is still going on at this time against France. So uh, Henry V. I mean, he's the son of Henry IV, so he gets to take the throne. Pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, he was. He was a great guy. So let me show you what he did. So during the Hundred Years' War, he was a great guy, um, but he only lasted nine years, which sucked. He conquered a lot of France during his reign. He did a great job. He's one of the best kings for getting land that England ever had, probably more than Edward the First, if not. So I'm gonna give him an, uh, an S here. Henry V is freaking awesome. Obviously, he's a Lancaster. I love the Lancasters. I'm kind of biased towards Henry V, but I do think he was a great king. Or I'm gonna kind of stop using the S tier now, um, but I, I just gotta put him. He's just so good. Uh, if he wouldn't, it's the the only thing that sucks about him though is he didn't reign very long. He's only king for nine years. He dies in 1422 on uh, from battle dysentery, um, which is is not good. But I think if he would have lived, we probably would have won. Uh, England probably would have won the Hundred Years' War, and he probably would have got to become the King of France. But you can like look at a map from the 1420s and see how much almost all of northwestern France was owned by England at the time. I mean, he came in and conquered a lot of that. Um, he did a lot of good things for. Uh, he did a lot of good things for England. Just just a solid solid king overall. He marries. Um, in, on, on the topic of France, he does end up marrying um, a French princess, Catherine of Valois, who is the um, 
the king of Charles the Sixth of Valois. Charles the Sixth, or Charles the Sixth, actually died the same year as Henry the Fifth. So he marries her, and she, that was her first wife. And then they have a, a, only one son named Henry. Or, um, he's the only one son. Uh, she was the obviously uh, the king queen queen consort. She was from Bavaria, though, kind. But she's actually from France. She was the uh, daughter of King Charles the Sixth of France, Charles the Sixth. So Henry V, I mean, he his expeditions in France were so good. Um, he actually commanded his father's forces, some of them, when he was taking over Richard II. So he was there at the time when the Lancasters took the throne. So he was a very popular guy too. Who is it? Um, so yeah, he he married a uh, oh, yeah. pr uh, French princess, which was a good. Thing. And he he ended up owning almost all France. I think if Henry V would have lived, he probably would have. Um, we probably would, uh, England probably. I keep saying we. I'm not from England. England probably would have won the Hundred Years' War at the time. But he died, and then his son took the throne, and it kind of screwed up. But he was a great leader in that. It actually kind of seemed like England was going to win that war. It had already been going on for like 90 years by the time he's out. So. That's how that is. All right, Lydia. Next stop is Henry the Sixth. What do you do with the other guy? And they have uh, Henry the Fifth is an S. He's, he's awesome. Hurry up with the next guy. So next is Henry the Sixth. Henry the Sixth is an interesting story. So as I was saying earlier, Lydia, what do you have to say about Henry the Fifth? He's ugly. No, I want you to give all your detailed thoughts about his looks right now. Um. He has like a overbite. This guy. Oh. Who are you looking at? He looks like the guy on Ratatouille, like the guy who comes and like looks. Um, the guy. If you guys ever seen Ratatouille, you probably know what I'm talking about. The guy who like it's not Ratatouille. He looks like he looks from. He, I don't know what it's called, but <laughs> he kind of does look like the guy from Ratatouille. The guy who comes and looks, and then they give him Ratatouille, and then he likes it, and then he. See, he's at the right talk. What are you saying? Are you speaking... He's the guy from Ratatouille. We'll just say that. But... <laughs> the guy from Ratatouille. And he looks like a chef. <laughs> so, yeah. That's all I have to say. He looks so cool, doesn't he? Mm. Okay, anyways, that's Henry V. So, his son, he dies in 1422. And he's got a son. That's eight months old. He's got one uh, one son. That's all he's got. He's got one kid. He's eight months old. He's a freaking baby. And he becomes king. Henry the Sixth is the guy. Now, they have him on here twice for reasons I don't really know. I guess because he reigned twice and he did. We'll get to that. Let me get to that. So, Henry the Sixth is a, just a god. You know. He's eight months old when he becomes king. He's king from 1422 to 1461 and then again from 1470 to 1471 but we'll get to that right. that's the thing so he was um eight months old when he becomes king do you Lydia, i want to hear your thoughts do you think an eight month old should be ruling a kingdom no <laughs> he doesn't even ow so he <laughs> did he you should... smash your finger yes he's like right go give me some chips okay yes. go, give me some... go give me some food She's going to get us some chips. So here's what happens. Preferably Cheetos or Doritos or whatever you have. So he becomes king at six months old. He's he's a really bad king. I mean, he's not too horribly terrible. He's not too horribly terrible. Horribly terrible. He's not too horrible. Um, but he is pretty bad. It's dur uh, the Hundred Years' War. He loses the Hundred Years' War against France, which was a major screw up on his part um, he's also king during the Wars of the Roses the War of the Wars of the Roses start basically what happens um, he's not a good ruler um, let's see here as you know right there we'll, t we'll talk about the Wars of the Roses here in a second but he I, I mean I can't really blame it on him because he was king at 8 months old I mean he hadn't really seen he didn't know what it was like being king because he was basically born into it. And his father died. Henry V died before he could really see how to run the country. So he was kind of a really selfish guy and he never really 
Um, he, like, his entire life, he just had everything handed to him. Um, and he would have, like, these bouts of madness during his reign. He was in very mental issues. That he would, he would just go catatonic in some situations and just completely useless as a king. And, um, he does uh, marry the... She, he marries the Countess of Anjou, just like Matilda did. So that's kind of cool. Um... Obviously, uh, he, let's see here, he was trying to ret retain his claim to the throne of France, um, and when Charles II is king of France, he, he, um, loses the Hundred Years' War. But here's, here's what happens, so, the hunt, the Wars of the Roses start during his reign, or not, or, or they start during his reign, yeah, in about the 1450s, there's this guy come along named Richard, he's the Duke of York. Now, if you remember what I was saying from earlier, the the Lancastrians, Henry the Fourth, Henry the Fifth, Henry the Sixth, they were all descendants of John of Gaunt, which is why they take their claim because they're descendants of Edward the Third. John of Gaunt, remember, he was the third son of Edward the Third, not the second, because you remember the first son was Edward the Black Prince and he died, so his line is screwed up. Lionel was the second son. Lionel's line was bypassed because Henry the Fourth came in and usurped um, Richard the Second. So here's what what goes on. Richard or Henry is now like he's a Lancastrian king, and they were accepted. Henry the Fourth, Henry the Fifth, and then it went to Henry the Sixth. But there's a guy come along named Richard. He's the Duke of York. Now he starts out not wanting to take the throne, which he tries eventually tries to do. He starts out wanting to be the Lord Protector. In other words, he wants to be the guy that's that is in charge when Henry's having these bouts of madness. Someone's got to control because the, he thinks the guy they're putting in charge is doing a very good job. So when Henry can't rule, he wants to do that. But they don't accept Richard. So he basically he tries for a few years, and then he basically gets tired, and he's like, you know what? I'm taking the throne itself. So Richard is the Duke of York. Now, if you're wondering, he basically says he's the most senior descendant of Edward III, not the Lancastrians. Because, but you would be like, well, you know, on the list you can see Edmund of Langley was the Duke of York, and he's the Duke of York. He's the most senior descendant of Edmund Langley. Edmund was the fourth son, and John of Gaunt was more senior, so Lancaster comes before York, so Henry VI was more senior than Richard. Right. That is not true! They did not stake their claim through their York roots. They actually did it through had a female line. See, Lionel had one child. Philippa was her name. Uh, she died in like 1381. She died back in the day. Days gone by. Um, she, um, her line goes through. And Richard is the most senior descendant of Edmund Langley and um, Lionel. So, like, at one point in there, one, one of them married their second cousin or something. And then they had Richard. Uh, but Richard basically, so he's, he's, he joins an army, and it starts the Wars of the Roses. He's from the House of York because he's the Duke of York. So you have the Wars of the Roses. You have the Red Rose, or the Lancaster side, and then you have the White Rose with the York side. Have you ever heard of the Wars of the Roses? Uh-uh. What do you think it is? Mm, the Wizard of Oz Road. Nope. <laughs> mm. So whose side are you on, Lancaster or York? I think you should get done so I can do memo and then go upstairs. Memo? So here's what happens. Hurry up! Richard fights for the throne. He tries to take the throne from Henry VI. Basically what you have to do now is kill Henry VI in, ba in battle and become th king by right of conquest. Just like William the Conqueror did to Harold Godwinson back in the day if you watched the last video. Obviously if you haven't watched the last video, what are you doing here? You should go watch that. Uh, but just like William the Conqueror, he's like, you know what, I'm going to come in and I'm going to take Henry the Sixth threat. So what happens is, uh, they're fighting for a few years. The war starts in 1457, and, uh, in 1461, Henry the Sixth gets killed. But Richard actually ended up getting killed. Um, he gets killed at the Battle of Stanford Bridge, where he very stupidly rides up out of the protection of, his, of the castle, and he basically gets killed. Richard gets killed in the battlefield. 
but the eldest son continued to fight and eventually scored a huge victory. And he became Edward the Fourth. So I'm gonna put Henry the Sixth. I mean, he wasn't a very good king, so he's probably a D too. Ah, I got an F. Gosh, we got a lot of D. She. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you were talking about him for like an hour, so he must have something to say. He does. I mean, I like Henry. I like the Lancaster, so I gotta put him in a C. I don't think he was as bad. I, I don't think he's as bad as most people think. Will you change my monarch to this guy? So Momo is up next. Will you change me to that guy? So Momo comes in. <laughs> he defeats. Four months later, he uh, Momo continued to fight. Momo was the Duke of York. He was the eldest son of Richard. So Momo comes in at the Battle of Towton. He defeats. There's the Battle of Towton, mm -hmm. April of 1461. I think Richard was killed in January 1461, but in April 1461, there's a battle. And Edward comes in, Momo comes in and becomes King Momo the <laughs> First. He comes in and uh, defeats Henry the Sixth in the Battle of Towton, the bloodiest battle ever fought um, on English soil, and becomes Edward the Fourth. I want to, one, one, Lydia. Once we go to England, I definitely want to visit the Towton battlefield because it, it's it's a historic fight. So the unique thing though is Henry the Sixth doesn't die during this. He actually stays alive and. Throughout the first reign of Edward the Fourth, so this guy is Edward the Fourth. A lady likes to call him Momo. Now I freaking hate him. I think the whole Wars of the Roses thing is just a joke. I think he should, um, Henry should have stayed on the throne. Now Henry did have a son, but um, you know I, I she she at the very end, and uh, she al he obviously doesn't do much. He's kind of no 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 her. Oh. She gets by. Why is there someone behind her? Oh, uh, I don't know. She's just hanging out. It's Mary. She's actually supposed to be up here. Um, so. Yeah, Henry the Sixth's sons basically bypass because Edward Kims comes in, Momo comes in, and uh, takes him out and becomes the new king of England. <laughs> Momo gets S tier? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to give Edward the Fourth an S tier. Edward the Fourth kind of sucks. I think we're going to give him an F. <gasps> You like Momo? Mm -hmm. You like Momo? Mm -hmm. She says he looks like Momo. I don't know who Momo is. So I was just calling him Momo. Look her up. I'm not looking it up. Why? Uh, so Edward the Fourth. I mean, don't he look sucks. It up, it's actually really scary, so the fact that you want to conquer a king is really crooked, and I don't think you should do that. Um, I don't like the Yorks. I'm just gonna throw it out there. All three, the York king, the suck. And Edward the Fourth, he wasn't even a good king, really. I mean, let's be real. He really wasn't. Uh, but he basically, the House of York, the Lancasters, are not on the throne anymore. So he reigns for the first time from 1461 to 1470. And then a second time from 1471 to 1483. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. No, I understand. Gotta talk more about Momo. Talk Bye. more about Edward. No, tell us who Momo is. Tell, tell us who Momo is. So the, let's see if this person... She's scary. Sounds like Edward IV. Yeah, she's scary. Okay, Edward IV was pretty scary, she too. She was a um, statue in China. Edward IV could not live in China. Yeah. He, he sure. was on YouTube. Um, kids YouTube. Telling kids. Please, I've been on at night. Huh? After sleeping. He throws kids in the oven at no. night. <laughs> Apparently. No. Apparently I have the four three kids in the oven. He tells kids to turn the oven on at night. <laughs> hmm? So she burns they can't hear you. Stone. I'm just eating. I'm going to tell you the story. Go. Go. She was on YouTube TV. Like the kids YouTube. And she was telling them to turn the oven on. When their parents were sleeping, so they would burn the house down. She's in jail. Huh? It was just a big ma- it was just like a clay mask, I think. I don't really know. She's just really scary, so... Don't Tell me about your nightmares you have about her. Tell me what's going on in your nightmares. <laughs> Tell the whole story. Right here. There is no story. 
No, come here. You have a you have a lot of dreams about her. Tell me your. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. You always have nightmares about me. No, I don't. Do you have nightmares about Melbourne? Do you have nightmares about Edward the Fourth taking you the throne, Henry the Sixth? Edward the Fourth. He's a scary guy. I don't like yours. Mm -hmm. Alright, bye guys. You know what York you know what York is, Lydia? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say York? Cheese. I love cheese. Not the the York I love cheese. Not the York mints. Oh yeah, I don't know why I think it's cheese, but I love cheese. What about New York? Cheese ball. Oh, so I got Cheetos here, so that was just what Momo is. So that's Edward the Fourth. I really don't like him too much, uh, as you know. Let's see if Nico answers. Call Nico Oh, Nico Call him Call Henry the Third. So yeah, guys, that's that's um, Edward the Fourth. Your call like, has been forwarded to. Call Henry the Third. Okay, so that's just what he does. Just not a good king, Edward the Fourth. Cause he just he just took over Henry the Sixth. I mean, dude, he's the king. We can't do that. But he does anyway. So, so after him, you get Henry the Sixth again. Henry the Sixth did eventually come back in 1470. He did come back and take the throne for a few months, for about a year. I think, Your call has been I think that's why they got him in there twice, but I'm not gonna. We're not gonna be ranking him twice. Uh, if we did, the second one be indecisive. We're not gonna put him in there. So Edward the Fourth uh, was king, and he died. Uh, he's got a daughter named Elizabeth of York. He's got two sons. His two sons. He has uh, Edward the Fit. Uh, Edward and um, Richard, I think, was his name. Um, so they get, um, he dies, so Edward IV suddenly dies, um, in his 40s. So they, they bring the young boy, he's got a young 12-year-old son named Edward, and he becomes Edward V, so they bring, so he basically becomes a king. For t He only rules for two months, though, Edward V, so we're going to put him in indecisive, because he wasn't king for very long, he was only king for, I think he was king, he took the throne in April of 1483, and died in June of 1483. Here's why he died, though. This is a very stupid thing. What happened is... I, I hate this. So, it, him and his brother... All right, so, Henry... Edward IV unexpectedly dies in his 40s. So, his mother... His wife is aunt, a woman named Elizabeth Woodville. Um, and her, his, her brother is Anthony Woodville. And he kind of has control of Edward V. And if you control the king... You obviously have influence. So, what happens is Anthony Woodville is bringing the young boy Edward V to be crowned in London as king. On his way to London, though, um, Edward IV's younger brother named Richard, right here, becomes Richard III. Uh, we're just going to throw him at the end, actually. He comes in and he basically um, intercepts Anthony Woodville and says, you know, I'll take care of our, our nephew. I'll take it from here. So he's like, you know, I'll get him to London. You you can go relax, Anthony. It's, it'll all be fine. So Richard takes Edward the Fifth, the young Edward the Fifth, and his brother Richard, and he locks him up in the Tower of London. And he and Richard the Third claims that... Um, Edward the Fourth's marriage to Elizabeth Woodville was illegal, and he had had an affair. Edward the Fourth had had an affair with a woman named Eleanor Butler, which he probably had, uh, but it's not two hundred percent true um, for certain. And there's also theories that go around that Edward the Fourth himself was illegitimate, that he his father wasn't really the Duke of York, and that uh, so Richard staked both those claims that Edward the Fourth had illegally married Elizabeth Woodville, therefore his children should be illegitimate, so Richard should take the throne. So, he locks up Richard and Edward, he locks up Edward V in the Tower of London, and him and his brother were in the Tower of London, and they basically became known as the Princes in the Tower, if you've ever heard of it. And then they get executed. Probably by Richard or someone on their, his behalf. So that was really bad. So Richard basically comes in, he, 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 um, he kills his nephew, 
He kills his 12-year-old nephew just to become king. Richard, this guy is a freaking, like, psychopath. What the heck, Richard? So, just for that reason alone, he's an f -tier. I mean, he becomes king, Richard III. He only reigns for three years, for two years. Uh, 1483 to 1485. Before he also gets taken over. There's so much conquest going on at this time. So, he, he sucks. I mean, he's... I would put him in indecisive, but obviously he has, he's not because obviously he has a major impact on things. Richard III, um, so he, you know, he kills his nephew just to become king. He kills his 12-year-old nephew. I mean, that get on my nerves too if my, uh, if I was a younger brother, my older brother had a son that was like a kid, a little kid that basically come in to become king before me. Yeah, it'd make me mad, but I'm not going to go out and kill him. Just to become king myself, I, that would just be, my God, Richard. He was just a freak. I don't know what he was doing. But he did that, and he was only king for th two years, and no one really liked him. A lot of the things with the Richards had not been very good. Richard the I, I mean, he was better than all of them, and he barely was even in England. And then you have Richard the II, who was usurped by his cousin. And then you have Richard the Third, who kills his nephew just to become king. Those are the only three Richards that we ever had, and... It's kind of good that we haven't got any more of them, because they are weirdos. Now, we're going to see if um, we can call anyone here to answer the phone, because I'm, I'm feeling lonely when you get someone on here. Um, let's see. Hey, Bruno answer? Call Queen Elizabeth II. All right. So we get Bruno in here to answer and see what he thinks about uh, Richard the Third. Richard the Third's a clear F for me. This is Taylor's dad. Quit calling him. Oh. The mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages at this time. Goodbye. Well, no one wants to answer the phone. I said his voicemail. It's weird. I don't know why they say Taylor. His name's Bruno. So, just know that. <coughs> oh! Oh! Let's watch. Heat up. So, Richard III, he gets killed at the Battle of Bosworth. He's fighting a guy. This guy tries to become king. Henry VII becomes the next king. Henry VII. Henry VII is a, was descendant of a woman named Margaret Beaufort. And, ironically, if you go up his line, he was from the house of Tudor. There was a guy named Owen Tudor, one of, I think his grandfather. And she actually married Catherine of Valois, the same person that the queen consort to Henry V up here. But Henry the the, um, the Seventh bases his claim because the Wars of the Roses are still going on. Just because the Yorkists have taken over the Lancasters doesn't mean the Lancasters are done. So, Henry's basically the last Lancaster in the left. He's known as Henry Tudor because of Owen Tudor. But he makes this claim through, uh, he's a descendant of John of Gaunt through an illegitimate line. Kind of a dodgy line, but uh, it's kind of unknown. Clear if that's what happened. His mother was Margaret Beaufort, and she was um, descended from the uh, Earl of Somerset, Henry Beaufort, who was the son of John of Gaunt. Now, it was kind of a dispute going on if he was illegitimate or not. Um, but earlier on, back in the day, uh, Richard II declared that Henry Beaufort was legitimate. And then Henry IV came in and said, you know, yeah, he's legitimate. But his descendants, or him, are never allowed to be in the line of succession. Uh, but that kind of did. Henry didn't really care. Uh, then people didn't care. He was the last Lancastrian left. So he has an army, Henry Tudor. Come to him. And fights Richard the Third at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485, and defeats him. And at one point in the battle, Richard the Third is killed um, at the Battle of Bosworth Field. Richard became the last. Richard the Third became the last English monarch to be killed on the battlefield. No other kings uh, were killed in the battlefield. So Henry the Seventh becomes king. He reigns from 1485 to 1509. He's a pretty cool guy. I like Henry the Seventh. I think I'm going to give him a B tier. Solid B. Not, obviously not one of the best kings ever, but 
he was a good king. I mean, he was... He gets the tutors now. So what he does is he has his... He defeats uh, Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field. So he has what he does, Henry VII, he marks his reign to the day before the Battle of Bosworth. So at least legally, he was the king at the Battle of Bosworth. And Richard was the guy who was a traitor fighting against the King of England. Was uh, Henry uh, Henry the Seventh? He did that, which basically said that you know what? I was actually the king at the Battle of Bosworth, and Richard the Third was just a traitor fighting against me. Obviously, that wasn't the case, but he just made it seem like that was the case because he didn't want to be a guy that just came on. So, it was Henry the Seventh. He marries Elizabeth of York. One of the boldest moves ever made in this because it ended the wars of the roses with the tudor rose the white and red tudor rose uniting the lancasters and the yorks so you see edward the fourth had a daughter named elizabeth of york who was the older sister of edward the fifth elizabeth of york uh he ends up marrying elizabeth of york elizabeth of york becomes the wife of henry the seventh so now all of their descendants are going to be uh, all these guys. So there's really no threat to any of their descendants reign because they're the, uh, starting with Henry VIII, his son, he's the claimant through the Yorks and the Lancasters. So there's no dispute whatsoever with any of their children, which is good. So he dies in 1509. He's obviously king during the um, late 1400s. Uh, he starts the 1500s, starting the 16th century. All right, England, of course. Next up, we have Henry the Eighth. Now, Henry the Eighth is most one of the most crooked kings that I've ever had. Let's see if I can get someone on the phone here because we learned about Henry the Eighth in Spanish class, and we're talking about him right now. Let's see if anyone on the phone. Let's see if I have anyone here in contact. Um. Let's call Nicolas. Nico, you gotta tell. Tell the viewers. You gotta tell the viewers how crooked Henry the Eighth was. Okay, so that's Henry VIII. So, Henry VIII is not the eldest son of Henry VII. Henry VII, he has an older son named uh, Arthur. And Arthur um, dies in 1502. He's uh, a few years older than Henry VIII. Uh, he marries the uh, Catherine of Aragon, who would eventually become Henry's wife down the line. Um, so that's what happens. He marries her, but then... Arthur dies. He's the Prince of Wales. Arthur ends up dying in 1502, like seven years before Henry VII. So Henry VIII wasn't even supposed to become the king originally because he was the second son. Uh, he was uh, the Duke of York. <laughs> Duke of York? Yeah. Ooh, gross. Obviously, uh, Henry was the Duke of York uh, at the time. One of these several instances... Um, where the Duke of York becomes the second son of uh, the second son of a monarch. So the Duke of York title has been very often given to the second son of a monarch. And every time that that title has been given, every single time the title of Duke of York has been given, it had the, the that person has either died without heirs or has become the monarch. It's happened every time. Uh, it's going to happen again with Andrew because Prince Andrew only has daughters, so it's going to happen again with, with him. So Henry the Eighth was the Duke of York. He was the second son. Uh, George the Fifth, I also uh, also I think was the Duke of York. He was the second son. So was uh, George the Sixth. He was also the Duke of York's second son. And I think Charles the First might also have been the Duke of York, and he was also the second son. I don't know if he was the Duke of York actually. Uh, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. I doubt that. I doubt he was. But he was the second son. Charles the First was. But. Henry the Sixth, or uh, Henry the Eighth, George the Sixth, George the Fifth—they were all second sons, and they were, just became the monarch. So Henry the Eighth, obviously, he's famous for 
the let's just get the big thing out of the way. He had six wives, okay? This guy was insane. He's king from 1509 to 1547. This guy is, is just freaking ridiculous. I, I just, I can't even explain what what this guy was doing. Uh, he one of the most crooked kings we ever had. I mean, he's just a terrible human being. So he starts, I mean, he's kind of like a handsome guy. But he's like uh, starting out, and then he gets fat later on. It's only later on that he got fat, and big. And he actually got to about 400 pounds. We were talking to him about him a lot in Spanish class with Miss Ola and stuff. So she obviously knows a lot about him today. So here's, I'm just gonna hit the highlights because I could spend, I could spend an entire video just talking about Henry the Eighth. But he's king during the uh, Reformation, obviously. So he married six times. So let's let's go through all of his wives real quick. So here's what happens. So he marries the first time to Catherine of Aragon. Uh, Catalina de Aragon, uh, who was the daughter of Fernando and Isabella of Spain. Ferdinand and Isabella, for those of you who don't know, those are the two famous monarchs that um, bestowed the three ships for Christopher Columbus. They funded his voyage. They were the ki uh, king and queen of Spain at the time, so Catalina was the his, their daughter. And she married Henry VIII. But she'd actually already previously married Arthur, but uh, Henry VIII actually had... Uh, falling in love with Catherine. I know that's weird. Ka so brother's wife is kind of like so he basically married his sister-in-law. But here's what happens. So if you want to marry the king in in England, you basically you had to be a virgin. And what happened was she, Catherine went up to the Pope and she swore that she had never had any sexual relationships with Arthur, which they probably didn't because I mean he was they were like. 14 or fi they uh, they were 15. I think Arthur was 15 when he died. They were like 15 years old and just teenagers. They didn't really. They're just teenagers. They weren't really having sexual relationships. Uh, so that was what happened. So she swore to the Pope. So which was probably true. I mean, if you're going to swear to the Pope, I mean, you must be telling the truth. So that's obviously what happened. So then she's like, okay, you may go forth with, forth with this marriage and marry Henry. So marry uh, um, Catalina. Catherine of Aragon marries Henry VIII. Uh, Henry VIII, uh, he, he wants a male to succeed him as king. He doesn't want a female. So he's like obsessed. This goes throughout his entire reign. He's just obsessed with having a male heir as his queen, as his son, as his heir. Uh, I also want to point out that Henry VIII was also king during the... Um, he had a lot of conquests in France. None of his French conquests were as, excess, or as successful as... Um, Edward the First or Henry the Fifth or any of those guys, uh, but he, he was okay. He was good. Um, obviously, that was not really. Bad. He was actually in like a whole, uh, jousting thing, and he actually Henry the Eighth actually got in a, a wrestling match with the King of France. Not sure who was the king. I don't know who it was. Was it Philip? One of the Philip. I think it might have been Philip the Seventh or Philip the Sixth. Let me let me actually see here. Who was, who did Henry VIII, so yeah, Henry VIII, um, so that was that, so uh, they only had w one child with Catherine of Aragon, they only had one child, Mary, who would eventually become Queen Mary the First, but she's not right now, that was in 1516, Henry was basically, like 20 years later, he decided, I, I know, I've had enough with Catherine's nonsense. I can't have a son, so I think it's her fault. So he, he blames it on Catherine for not being able to have a son because Henry had a, had a lot of mistresses and he had a lot of illegitimate children, but you had to have legitimate children for them to be king. Because uh, basically what I mean by legitimate child is you have to be the son of the monarch and the queen uh, the the by marriage. If you just have... A uh, child with a mistress that's not a legitimate child. Uh, that's Henry VIII. Uh, well, we're not even close to being done. Holy crap. Wrestling. Match. So, um, who was it? It was it was one of the kings of France. Oh, King Francis the First. Francis the First of uh Fran France. It was the guy that had like the big face. He was in France one time, and he actually. 
I'm, 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 I'm saying no joke. He literally had a full-on wrestling match with the King of France, which was which was pretty awesome. Uh, Henry VIII did that, and he obviously was complete. He was huge. I mean, he defeated. So he decides he wants to divorce Catherine after she got him a daughter, and that was the only story. They had a lot of kids, but none of them died. All of them died very young, like in childbirth and stuff like that. So he marries. He's got his eyes on another woman named Anne Boleyn, is who he marries next. So he has to get a divorce. He wants. He decides he wants to divorce Catherine, which is a no-no, because the only religion back in the Christianity at the time of this in the 1530s was Roman Catholic. So this sparks the English Reformation. Obviously, per, before this time, you had Mar Martin Luther going in uh, write his 95 theses on the church of the Roman Catholic Church. So he's already tried to reform, and he creates a new thing called the Protestants. Uh, so obviously, the English monarchs being Catholic, you you can't in Catholicism legally you cannot divorce. Uh, you can get annulled, but annulment is very is only used for very specific situations that don't include this. So he decides he wants to get because he can't execute Catherine. Because if he executes Catherine, I mean she's the daughter of Ferdinand and Isabella. I mean imagine how how that would go down. So he he can't he's not gonna kill Catherine. So he decides he wants to divorce Catherine. So this is a big pain in the butt. So he eventually does end up divorcing her with uh, Thomas Cranmer helps helps out with the divorce. Uh, a lot of these guys, but the Pope like disagreed. He's like, no, you cannot divorce your wife, and it, he just broke ties with the church, and it, it just became a mess from there. And it basically caused the English monarchy to not be Catholic anymore, and they reverted to Catholicism, which had already been. It was just a big skeptical at this time because people were like, dude, Catholicism is is not the right way to go. So they create the Protestants, and that's what he him becomes, and then he divorces. With the help of Thomas Cranmer and all these other guys, they uh, help Henry uh, divorce Catherine. Eventually he does, but Catherine does not. She's from Spain, obviously. So her and Mary, Spain was strongly Catholic at the time. So her and Mary basically get exiled. They basically get, at, he's, Henry's like, get out of here. So he doesn't, he just, they, they say a lot and stuff. Mary's significantly older than his other children. So they're out, and you know, they live a life, but... It's it's not good. So he remarries Anne Boleyn now is his second what? Uh, so he basically divorces Catherine eventually, and then Catherine actually considered the day until she died that she considered herself the Queen of England, and she lived a long time. She lived to see like uh, several of his other uh, wives, and this again this was just because she couldn't give him a son. Like my God, Henry. So here's what happened. If you think that was harsh. Just wait till Anne Boleyn. So here's what happened. He married Anne Boleyn in I think 1532 after after divorcing Catherine. Um, I think he married Anne Boleyn like what was it like a day? No, 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 that was the other one. Very shortly after divorcing Catherine Aragon. I mean the divorce wasn't really official. So he, get, he marries Anne Boleyn. So he tries to get a son with uh, Anne Boleyn. And, um, she is like the new woman, a very, very attractive woman. And she was obviously attracted to the king, to Henry. Uh, and then they get married. So they can have legitimate children. So Henry tries to have a, a son with Anne Boleyn, and it doesn't work out. In 1533, uh, they get him a daughter who becomes Elizabeth I, right here. Um, so Henry's furious. He's like, freaking, this is the second time I can't get a son! So... He basically, he, he's had it with Anne Boleyn. You know what? Here's what he does. Guillotine. He beheads his own wife. Yes, you heard me. Just because she couldn't give him a sign, he chops her heads off. I mean, he doesn't personally chop her head off, but you know. He's like, off with her head! So her head gets chopped off just because she couldn't give him a sign. It's like, dude, are you okay, Henry? But obviously, you know, he's the king. We gotta listen to him. There was no one that really back down. So Anne Boleyn loses her head, and Elizabeth is the like. I, I just imagine being Elizabeth and just living your life, knowing that your dad 
chopped your mother's head off just because you were a certain gender. It, it, it's, it's terrible. That's just how times were back then. Much different. You couldn't get away with something like that today, I'm just saying. But yeah, Elizabeth does. She gets to live and stuff. She's only a few years out of that. So, the day Anne Boleyn loses her head, uh, Henry marries a third time to Jane Seymour, who was probably the only life that he liked. Um, that's the one he's buried with. He's buried with Jane Seymour. You can go in the St. George's Chapel, visit it today in England, and um, there's a vault they have there, which I'm going to go to. They have a vault there, and it's um, you have Henry VIII, Jane Seymour, Charles I is buried in there, and then you have uh, an infant child of Queen Anne all buried in that one vault down there in the St. George's Chapel in the basement, which I really want to go and see that. But that's the one he wanted to bury with Jane Seymour. Uh, so Jane Seymour, uh, he tries to get a son with her, and he does get a son named Edward. Uh, and he eventually becomes King Edward VI after Henry dies. So he's happy with Jane Seymour, but Jane dies a few days after giving birth to Edward. So she dies of, by, shortly after childbirth, and Henry is basically sad now. And that's the only wife that he truly loved, um, because that's the one he's buried with down there. Because, the, I mean, Jane Seymour got him a son, which was the most important thing any of his wives could do for him. Uh, so that was how that was. But so, since she's dead, uh, he marries this a fourth time. There's she gets he gets this girl coming in from uh, Germany, the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, Holy Roman Empire is where that was at the time. Uh, her name is Anna of Cleves or Anne of Cleves. Some people call her Anne. Some people call her Anna. Uh, Anne of Cleves is the th fourth wife, and she comes in and. She's, like, very young. I'm like, holy crap. Um, and Henry is married to her. I think she's only he's only married to her for, like, six months. Oh, yeah. Miss Olot told us something. I didn't know about this. So Henry comes and he disguises himself. When when Anna arrives on the in the, sh in the ship, the dock, yeah, when he's she coming to get married to him, because Henry's like, I need to see her first before I can uh, fully marry her. So she, he disguises himself up. He goes down to the dock, and apparently, like he, he goes in. So she's Anna's like standing over here, and then he Henry just comes up and attacks her. He gives her a big hug and kiss kiss her on the on the lips, I think, or something like that. He just comes in like freaking. It's, it's, it's like, my God, this freaking grown man decides he's got his cape on and everything. And then later on, she realizes that that was the king. And then it's like, oh, God, this, what a great way to start a marriage right there. But it didn't last. He was only married for six months. And Henry just, he could not, he slept with her and stuff, but he didn't, he could not, uh, he didn't have any, like, real relationship with her and, like, any sexual relationship with her, which was obviously a thing back then, which was what they had to do. But, like, he basically claims that she's she's ugly. I don't... I'm not going to be married to her anymore. So she basically names her as his sister in name, which is not really a... I mean, that's really weird. But she he doesn't behead her. She just... He's like, she's just... I, I can't stand her. She's ugly. I don't want to be married to this ugly woman anymore. So she... He, she divorced... He divorces her. And after what happened with Catherine of Aragon earlier, uh, divorces can happen. So he divorces Anna Cleves... And then he marries a fifth time to Catherine Howard, who's like a teenager at this time. She comes in. That marriage didn't happen because Catherine Howard, he's like this 50-year-old man. And then Catherine Howard's like a freaking, she's like 20, if not 20, she's like 18. And she cheats on him. Once Henry finds out she cheats on him, he has her beheaded. So he beheads two as well. And then he marries a sixth time to Catherine Parr, who uh, was lucky enough to outlive him. Uh, she... He died in 1547 when she was the queen. Uh, they obviously, uh, she was, lived until the end of uh, his reign uh, before he could find a way to um, divorce her or get rid of her for whatever reason, which he probably would have. I would say Catherine Parr was probably his second most liked wife out of them uh, all. But uh, Catherine Parr did eventually end up marrying Thomas Seymour. Was it Thomas Seymour? Or Edward Seymour. It was Thomas Seymour. It was uh, Jane Seymour's uh, brother. She married. And then they had a child, but um, they were both hang-drawn. Thomas Seymour got hang-drawn and quartered, and then Catherine Parr died uh, 
uh, after giving birth to uh, Mary, which was their, their daughter's name. Uh, it's unknown how what happened to her. We're talking about all of this in Spanish class. That, that was how that is. So I think we've got enough about Henry VIII. Basically, he's a crooked man. He's after. He just wanted too much power. I mean, he was just. I, I just. I wanna. I try not to rank these on character too much, but I'm, I, character plays a huge role in Henry VIII. And I, don't, I just don't think Henry VIII was a good king at all. I mean, he was okay, but like, my God, he was. Was he crooked? Now let's see where we're at on here and the time, because I think we're pretty. Uh, shoot! Come on. Okay, here we go. All right. Um, we are at an hour, ten minutes. Well, you know what? I don't know if we're gonna get done today or not. So that's Henry the Eighth. I mean, he's after here. So, once he dies, his beloved son, Edward, who becomes King Edward VI at age 9, just like Henry III up here, uh, becomes king. He's king for six years, from 1547 to 1553. His beloved son, Edward VI, dies as a teenager. And he's 15 when he dies. I'm going to put him in indecisive. Here's why, because Edward VI, he was really king during not much of the time, and he was he was a child. He had a regent his whole. He wasn't really king. You're not really a king when you're a child, because uh, you're not really ruling. I mean, you can, but you're not really ruling. You have a regent. So, and since he was only king for six years, I mean, he was king for six years, which is a long time. But he wasn't really ruling for most of that because he was obviously, you know, he had a regent. Um, obviously, yeah, he was ruling, of course, but not in the same way as most of the other guys. Like he can't order people to death and stuff like that. So I gotta put him in indecisive because you, you you just he didn't get the potential to do what he could have. We didn't get to really see what he could have done as a king. So that's how that is. So next up is Lady Jane Grey. So when it's clear Edward the Sixth was dying, they get him to write a will which basically bypasses his older sister Mary, his half sister Mary, that was the Catherine uh, daughter of Catherine of Aragon. She was the sister next. And, um, yeah, so, um, he bypassed her, because Mary, Mary was Catholic, and as we talked about earlier, Catholic is bad, uh, for this, he doesn't want to be Catholic, so he bypassed her in, the, in favor of Mary's younger sister, Mary's, Mary is Henry VIII's younger sister, and she's got a, a daughter named Frances Brandon, and then, who marries a guy named Henry Gray, and then it's, their eldest daughter, Lady Jane Grey, who's Edward the Sixth wants to take over after. But Lady Jane Grey's only on the queen on the throne for nine days. She's only queen for nine days, so she's going to get indecisive. Also, uh, it didn't work out. Mary takes the crown um, in 1553. She's queen, she's queen from July 10th, 1553, to July 19th, 1553. Obviously, not good at all. Uh, so yeah, just can't. You can't say what she was going to do. Uh, she was Protestant. Uh, Mary was not. But Mary comes and takes the crown. It, it doesn't last very long. And, you know, it just gets screwed up from there. Because Mary was obviously the daughter of Catherine of Aragon. Uh, then Mary takes the crown from Jane and becomes the new the new queen. So since she's Catholic, she tried to... She's known as Bloody Mary. Obviously, if you if you guys drink out there, I don't... Mm, probably don't really want to, ever... Uh, but there's a drink called Bloody Mary, if you're wondering what Bloody Mary is. She was known as Bloody Mary because she tried to revert England back to Catholicism and burnt a lot of people at the stake. You can't really blame her for that, though, because there was a lot of Protestants that killed Catholics. Um, you know, she was Catholic, killed Protestants. But since she was obviously the daughter of the Queen of Spain, she was mad at Henry for divorcing her, and she's like, you know what, we are going to change England to Catholicism. Uh, we don't like this Protestant stuff. So she tries to do that and kills a lot of people in the process and she's very... Oh, my God, Mary. Um, she's pretty scary, also. Uh, I don't want to... Would she be F? Torn between F and D on Mary the first. Uh, obviously, oh yeah, Mary does marry Felipe the second of of Espana, Spain. Um, 
he's the king of Spain, and he marries her, and he kind of becomes the king of Spain, Spain for a few years, but I'm not going to count him, because they kind of were joint monarchs. But I'm not going to count Philip. Felipe, I'm not going to count him. He's kind of not really the guy. Um, I think it's going to be the last one we do. I think I'm going to end it here, actually, because I, I think we can start an Elizabeth next episode. That would be good to start. And then I'll try to get through the next episode. I'm not going to stall too much. So yeah, it's Mary the first. I think we're gonna put her in. Uh, should we put her in F? I think she she's got to be F, right? Yeah, I'd say so too. Yeah, yeah, probably F. Yeah, she was not good. I mean, she the fact that she executed so many people. She could try probably try to revert convert it back in other ways, but that was just how you did it back then, kill people. I mean, she was not good. I'm gonna put them at the end too. I'm not gonna count them. Not gonna count Philip, but that's how that is. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Be sure to come, like, subscribe, and I'll come back. I won't be able to do this tomorrow, so I'm gonna have to do it Thursday. I'll see you guys or Wednesday. What is today? Monday. I keep thinking it's Tuesday. No idea why. I'll see you guys back on Wednesday, and we're gonna finish this up. I'm gonna try not to stall too much, and we're gonna try to get through. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. Be sure to come, like, subscribe. If you haven't already, feel feel free to click out, uh, check out the first episode. Uh, so with that, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye! Wah.